A very common theme on a layout is a prominent viewing area where the main line crosses in front of a town used as its background. The quality of roads and sidewalks can make or break this vision. Even though this layout portrays the 1950s, there are still towns that have this general look. There are lots of pre-made roads that you can buy, but in general they lack the freedom of assuming any unusual shapes and intersections you might need. So the methods here give the opportunity to create your own style and not have the same look as numerous other layouts. Plus, these methods work in just about any scale, not just HO scale. We will also jump around a bit with some other scenic topics that will give consideration to your layout planning. Our local officer is looking for the car's registration that was frequently on the steering column back in the 1950s. This cop keeps a good eye on cars near the town bank. Most roads and streets are not black or anywhere near that. Once the tar ages a bit, they assume a shade of gray. Our time of around 1956 explains the music selection. So be aware of your time frame. It's important. Let's get to work. All of our streets and country highways are made from large 28 by 44 inch sheets of widely available 14 ply art illustration board. For longer road lengths, it can be butt spliced together with essentially no visible signs. I paid about $7 a sheet for this multiple piece batch of material. Typically, it's about 55 thousandths of an inch thick or so. This type of material cuts extremely clean edges, allowing angled cuts with a sharp razor to simulate how asphalt roads have sloped edges. Using the large sheets allows minimizing splices. I had two town intersections that were formed without splices. All roads have a raised center line known as a crown to shed rainwater to the sides. Cutting and gluing a strip of material to raise the road's center line will create this effect when you glue down the road's edges. You might test your building placement and roadway configuration and how those two notions interact with each other. Just a few mock-ups to pre-visualize the best look will dictate the width and placement of the road and its side streets. The same illustration board can form the sidewalks and pads for buildings to rest on. Notice that the sidewalk layer rests on top of the roadway edge so that it's higher than the road by the curb height. The odd road angle formed an area that was used to create a little rest park. The tree filled the visual gap out to the parking lot area in the back of the buildings. Let's go off tangent for a bit. The buildings are the main reason for adding the streets and sidewalks after all. So, back to that bank. This is a very well-known plastic kit available from Walther's. I added the bank's wide first trust bank sign just above the second story windows to disguise the ornate stonework. I wanted the bank to seem a bit modernized, like 1956. The other addition was the hanging overhead shelter above the center entry door. After making this, it occurred to me that water could collect in the overhang with no place to go. No downspouts here. This is the same kit that was made into a small town grocery store. It seemed odd that this building has three very narrow front doors. That's not an easy way to get a shopping cart in and out. So I built a more modern food store we'll see in a moment. In reality, people before about 1945 carried out bags of groceries, since shopping carts were to come somewhat later. You can see the ornate stonework above the upper windows here. Hiding that with the bank sign really changed the bank's overall look. So this grocery store was actually installed in the original plan next to the yellow hardware store to its left. The Mamie's Corner restaurant is anchored at the corner. The restaurant was a woodland scenics kit called Carol's Corner Cafe. I moved the hardware store around the corner to open up a wider space for a new grocery store that looked more like a post-World War II design. This white building was built from a pear of City Classics West End Market Kits, number 114. So removing the old blue grocery store and moving the hardware store someplace else allowed a larger store with parking on the side and wide doors in and out. This larger store seems more like a place that could actually fit all the things customers might expect in the 1950s. Back to roads and sidewalks now. 
The same material to make roads and sidewalks can also make concrete areas around tracks and stations. The scribe lines are made with a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade, used with care, I might add. The scribe lines indicate where the sections were poured. These cut marks just break the surface, and when you add weathering with powdered chalks, the cracks will show up with more clarity. The sidewalk scribe lines are about a half an inch apart. That would represent about 43 inches in HO scale. I use that as my standard to use a six inch metal scale as a cutting guide. It's exactly a half an inch in width. The 12 inch long steel scale is the same width. Incidentally, all U.S. speed limit signs before 1958 were black with white letters, not the other way around like today. They could be read clearly at a further distance, especially at night or when the sun is directly in your eyes. The sidewalk in front of my own house has spacing of 38 inches. The walkway in my backyard used 58 inches, so you can have variation in your plans. Pressed fiber soundboard is made from things like sugarcane fibers. I used lots of it that came with a smooth white paper facing.